Hello, this is Jonathan Gardner, and this is part of the Theory of Python lecture series. And in this lecture, I wanted to talk about dynamic scope. And dynamic scope is one of those things that you don't know you need it until you know what it is, and then you start seeing uses for it all over the place. And um, I'm just gonna mention right now that for dynamic scope, there's basically two cases in Python where you're gonna wish you had it. One is logging, and the other is configuration. So in the case of logging, what you're doing when you're doing logging is you want to understand the behavior of the program by generating messages when certain events occur. And those messages get stored in a log file that you can review after the program is running, or even while the program is running if you want to know what's happening at the current time. And one of the issues with logging is you can log like every single little thing that happens, in which case your log file would be absolutely terrifyingly huge or you can log only the most significant events, in which case you won't have too much detail on what exactly happened between those events. And so typically with logging, the problem is choosing the right log level. So you get enough messages that you can understand what your program is doing, but not too many that you're filling up your disk and crowding the network with logging messages flying all over the place. So once you understand, once you understand dynamic scope, you're gonna see how it applies to logging. And the other place where it's really useful is something called configuration. And what configuration is, is when you're writing a program, you're gonna realize that there are certain parameters that affect the behavior of the program that you, either you can't decide what it should be, or you want to allow the people who run the program to choose and set those parameters. A really good example is if you have a program that communicates with a server on the internet, then you want to allow the user to determine what the address of that server is so that they can substitute their own server if they don't like your server or if you don't even provide a server, they need to provide their own, like a database or something like that, then you need to provide the opportunity for the users of your software to specify where that server is, maybe the authentication credentials, like the username and the passwords, things like that uh, are typically found in configuration files. And for dynamic scope, when you understand dynamic scope, you're gonna see why configuration is pretty cool for that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna talk really briefly about the three types of scopes. And I am by no means a computer scientist, so um, I don't think I've read the Wikipedia article on this topic for a very long time, but this is what I understand. There's basically three um, scopes in programming in general. Python doesn't really do any of these scopes quite the same way as a theoretical, but it's close enough. So the first is lexical scope. The next is called, le uh, the first is global scope. The next is called lexical scope. And the last is called dynamic scope. And global scope is shared by all parts of the program, right? And there's only one global scope per program. Now, Python does like a file slash module scope where each file or module has its own global scope. There is no, like you can't in Python say, give me the global scope for the entire program. That's just not possible. But you can say, give me the global scope for this file that I'm in, or give me the global scope for a file that I've imported as a module. So the global scope is shared and there's many problems with the global scope. And one of the biggest problems is because various bits of code all across your program are sharing this, there's a good chance that two bits of code are gonna disagree on what certain variables should be named or how they should be interpreted. And uh, that's what we might call a namespace collision or it, it, and it could be really bad because you might say like, hey, in this part of the program, we're recording the distance and you're thinking kilometers, and in the other part of the program, you're thinking in miles, and, and you've got some serious bugs in your program that are difficult to fix without looking at the entire program and changing all the access to that. Lexical scope is generated for each function call, and we're already pretty familiar with how that behaves. Um, it, and the, the, the net effect of lexical scope, and the reason why it's called lexical scope is because when you're looking at the program code itself, you can see how the nested functions refer to variables that are in the functions that they're nested in. And so it's a very natural system. Python's global scope is more of a lexical scope for each of the modules um, because you can see in the file itself how that variable that you're writing, like if you say a equals six, you're really referring to the a that's defined in the beginning of the file or in the surrounding function or things like that. So lexical scope is pretty useful. Uh, dynamic scope. Uh, this is generated also for each function call, um, more or less, but it's accessed by the call stack. Let me give you an example of what dynamic scope might look like in Python if such a feature were ever to be introduced. So you would have a function called A, 
okay? And this would call, let's say this would specify dynamic z, and z is equal to 5, and then it's going to call b, okay? And then b down here is going to print z, okay? And then you specify here, you say dynamic z is equal to 6, let's say. And then when you call A, it's going to print 5. But if you were to call B, it would print 6. Okay, what, what's going on here? Why would that do that? Well, in dynamic scope, the variable is looked at based on the call stack. You might even need to say something like dynamic Z here as well. I, I, maybe you'll have to say dynamic Z or something like that in order for Python to understand. So when you're calling B, it says print the Z, but don't look for Z in the lexical scope. Don't look for Z in the global scope. Look for Z in the dynamic scope. So look at the function that called this function and then ask it what the dynamic Z is. So in this first call, we're calling A, sets the dynamic Z to five, and then it calls B. And in the second function, it's gonna look up to the caller, right? In this case, A was the caller. And so it's gonna say that Z is five and print that. When you're calling it directly, however, you've already set z equal to six, and so it's only looking at this code. It's not looking at a because it wasn't called from a, okay? This is something to think about. It's not something to, like, if you don't understand this, you'll still be a fine Python programmer. Um, but once you understand it, you'll really start seeing the utility of it. For instance, in logging, right? So let's say b is gonna log a message, but only if the logging level is set high enough, right? Well, when we call B through A, we up the logging level so that B will show its messages. But when we're calling B otherwise, we don't want its logging level to be higher, so we keep it low, right? In the case of configuration, right? If we're gonna call B, it needs to know which server to talk to, okay? If we're calling B directly, then we'll use some global default value. But if we're calling B through A, then we can set the server that we're supposed to talk to and then B will be talking to A to the server that A said rather than the server that was set at the global level. Okay. Now there is a way in Python to simulate dynamic scope. And basically the way you simulate dynamic scope is you have uh, a set of variables. It's going to be a dictionary. We haven't talked about dictionaries yet. And you pass that into each, each function call. So I'll give you an example here. So vars, and I'm using syntax that you're not familiar with yet, so don't panic if you don't know what this means. Okay, and then def b also accepts vars, and it's going to print uh, vars z. And then when you're calling it, you set your vars equals to, let's say, uh, z is equal to 5. I'm sorry, colon five, okay? And then when you call B with the vars, wait, wait let's just do the six. When you call B with the vars, it's gonna print six. And when you call A with the vars, it's going to print five, okay? The, it, the difference here, however, is this isn't quite right because this vars actually overwrites the Z. And so now after it's called A, vars has been changed to five. The z has been changed to five. So you might have to do something like vars is equal to vars.copy. So you're not modifying the vars that were passed in. Okay. Anyway, that's a brief introduction to dynamic scope, kind of my ideas on it. Um, it is a feature that I think at some point Python will pick up because it's useful. Um, it is, it can, you can create something like it more or less. Um, there's some attempts to do dynamic scope that you can read about on the internet. And if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. Um, I think this is something to think about, something to, to realize. Uh, languages that do have dynamic scope, absolutely have dynamic scope. This list kind of has dynamic scope by default. Uh, Perl has it, I, I forget what they call it. Perl, they call it, um, I think they call it local. Right, so if it's a local variable, it, it starts using dynamic scope. Pretty useful stuff. Hey guys, take care, bye bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.